Hi everyone. As I mentioned in our last video, we'll be sharing with you all some topics and tools that our educators would find most helpful during this time of distance and online learning. But first I'd like to answer a couple of questions that we received in the past day. And the first question is, what can I share with my students to help keep them engaged and in the learning mindset? Something we do at the TGR Learning Lab is we really like to promote the culture of inquiry. So we ask students to ask questions about things they see in their activities, in their daily lives around the world. And one of the ways we do that is we actually use a website called What's Going On in This Picture, which is developed by the New York Times. And they simply post a picture every single week without its caption. And they encourage students to share their thoughts, their ideas, and just develop a discussion about what's going on in this picture. So you can simply access that by doing a quick search uh, with the New York Times and typing in what's going on in this picture. And you'll be able to find an archive of all the pictures they use every single week. At the end of the week, they actually reveal the caption. So it'd be a great discussion with their students. Another question we have is, where can I access content that I can quickly share with my students? We actually have a digital website called TGR EDU Explorer, which we'll talk more about on Thursday's video. Uh, but this site has student-led digital experiences where students can go right off the bat with no login, it's all free, and simply uh, explore different types of topics. For example, we have one called the Following Nature's Lead, which allows them to take a look at biomimicry through a virtual squid dissection. So highly recommend that site. It's tgredu.explore.org, and you'll find a variety of different digital um, experiences that your students can go through. And with that, I'd like to hand it over to Jason Porter, who will be giving us an overview, overview about how to use the free Zoom video conferencing tool to maximize collaboration and distance learning. Hello, my name is Jason Porter, a member of the TGREDU Create team at TGR Foundation. TGR Foundation would love to serve as a resource for educators in this challenging time when you'd love to be with your students and colleague, colleagues maximizing learning, but in many cases, you just don't have that option. Hopefully you've seen from our eBlasts and other communications that we're going to be offering a series of videos and interactive digital workshops to have educators come together as a community and figure out how can we keep learning going even if we're not together. Today we're going to be talking about how to use Zoom to maximize collaboration with distance learning. Zoom is a video conferencing platform that we've used at uh, TGR Foundation to run our, our digital workshops um, with online educators, but we've been able to use some of the powerful tools of Zoom to bring those online educators together and do a lot of the same interactive things that we would do with them in person. So we're going to review those features today and talk about how you might do the same thing with your students and colleagues work with them in a really meaningful and interactive way, even though you may not be there with them. Another reason we're talking about Zoom um, is that they've recently, the, the Zoom company has recently um, made these free educator accounts a little more powerful. So let me share with you some information about that. As you can see from my screen, um, Zoom has recently made it so that the free accounts that normally have a 40 minute time limit um, on their sessions are now opened up to educators so that you can have a much longer session, up to 24 hours, with as many as 100 people at one time. That normally is something you'd have to pay for with Zoom, um, but now you can get that through the free account. So really giving a lot of power um, and, and opens up all those great tools that Zoom has to offer to work with uh, students and colleagues through distance learning. So let's talk a little bit how you would go about this. What are the steps that you would go through? Um, so the first step is that you have to sign up for a free basic account of Zoom. You may already have that. If you do already have that, then you can move to step two. If you don't, then you can come in and click the link to uh, sign up for your account. Um, all of the links for you to be able to go to Zoom and, and interact with these steps uh, are below in the description. So please look underneath the video um, and find those links for you to start this process. Once you click on that link, it will take you to an area that looks like this, where you can sign up free for Zoom. Your, you have to use your work email address, and this is a pretty important point. You can't use a personal account, like a Gmail account or something like that. Use the email address that the school provides to you. Um, and this is gonna be important, important to be able to verify you as an educator so you can unlock the power of these accounts. Once you've signed up for your account, then you will come to step two, which is a matter of filling out this form below. 
verifying the information about you in your school, and then you click Submit. Once you click Submit, Zoom will contact you in a short period of time, verify that you are in fact an educator, and then open up the, the time limit on your free account. So giving you a lot of power to use with your students. The other thing that I want to, to point out to you um, is that you know today we're talking about how to use Zoom for some of these resources, but I also want to let you know that uh, Zoom has a lot of uh, videos and training already built into it. Um, again, this link is gonna be found underneath the video, and so please check that out. Uh, but it just shows you that there are a lot of different features that Zoom has, and there are training videos that they have to help you figure out uh, what are the different things that you can do. We're gonna go over some of the features that really help it be interactive when you're not with your students or with your, your colleagues, uh, but please refer to these links as well because it'll help you do some of the other basic and more advanced features that Zoom has to offer. Okay, so let's start going into to some of these, these features that Zoom has to offer. Um, the first thing I, I want to point out is that you can see this, this bar at the top here um, that I'm dragging my mouse over. So this is the toolbar for Zoom. And I'm currently recording this screencast in Zoom, so you can see some of these features as we work along. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is this uh, share screen feature. Um, I've been using this already, but I'm gonna go ahead and click on new share. And what you see I can do is that I can share different parts of my screen. So I could share a PowerPoint if I have that up. I've had some websites up that I've been sharing with you. Um, there's also things like whiteboard, which allows you to um, write on a whiteboard just like you would with your students. Um, and then some other options as far as sharing phones and, and things like that. So a lot of power to share screens. When you share these, it allows the people that are joining the Zoom meeting, your students or your colleagues, to see your screen and interact with them. Um, another feature, and so if we looked at some of the, the more advanced here, um, is that it allows you to share parts of your screen. Um, you can also add additional uh, cameras. You can add files. Um, and the, the students or colleagues that are joining you can also share their files too. And that, that's a feature that, that you can unlock um, where you can share files, they can share files, making it really interactive, right? So if you're having students, say, work on a, a Google Classroom document um, or something that they've saved on their computer, and then you want to touch base with them over Zoom and have them share what they're working on in real time through their screen, that might be a good feature for you, okay? So we're going to go back to the PowerPoint that I've been sharing um, to, to look at some of these other features. Okay. Another really important feature I'd like to, to share um, is this polling feature. So I'm going to click on the polling feature here. And so this does exactly what it sounds like. It gives a poll um, or a survey, questions that you can ask students. The nice thing about this is it could be really be useful for, say, formative assessment or something along these lines, um, where you can ask students a question um, or, or your colleagues a question. Um, once you're ready for them to look at this, you can launch the poll. They can then see that poll and answer it, right? Click on the, the different questions. And then when you end the poll and share the results, then they'll be able to see what the results were, okay? Um, so I don't have anyone joined on my Zoom right now, so you can't see their results, but you get the idea of, of how it could be shared. Um, and you are able to edit these questions. This is just a sample question. So you can decide what kind of questions you want to use. Do you want to use it for formative assessment um, or what might be the, the best way for you to use it with your students and colleagues, okay? Okay, and then another feature that I want to show, and this is one you may not be as familiar with, but really allows for a lot of great interaction is something called breakout rooms. So breakout rooms are a way for you to have the participants that join you to go into small groups. So let's say I had 10 people join me on a Zoom and I wanted them to be in five small groups. I can make it so that those participants only are seeing each other within those small groups and then I'm able to move throughout those groups and interact with them um, just like I would if I had students say sitting in pods of desks in the classroom and I'm walking around and interacting and seeing how they're working. Really powerful feature that is, is hard to do on some other platforms um, but this is a really nice way to drive some interaction with your students or with your colleagues, even when you're not there. 
Let me show you a couple features of this so you can decide how many rooms you want. So let's say again we had 10 and I wanted, we had 10 participants and I wanted five different groups. So I can say five rooms. I can say automatically so it'll just randomly assign them. I could also ask for it to do it manually so I could put different people in different rooms. And then after you create your breakout rooms, um, it will show you who is in each of the rooms and you can go into those rooms, like I said, and check in on them. You can also send messages to those different groups, letting them know about time and things like that. And you can also um, write on a chat board. So each group has their own chat board that only they can see. And so if you want to share specific information just for that group, they'll be able to see that alone. Um, and you can set, there's all sorts of, of features on this. You can set time limits for how long the, the group interaction is going to be. You can have them end automatically at a certain time, um, or you can close them down when you want to manually. So just a lot of power here to be working with groups of students and colleagues when you're working with them through a video conferencing platform. So a lot of power. All right, and then um, a, another feature that I'd like to show you that I've kind of referred to already, and this is our chat. So a chat is a common feature for video conferencing. Um, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but just want to show you one of the ways that we use this to great effect is the sharing links. So let's say I wanted students to go to Google. Um, I can type Google into that chat platform. They can now um, scroll over that link and click on it and go there. So a nice way to just share different things that you want your students to work with um, and, you know, could also do some formative assessment, could have students check in, could have them reflect on things they're learning. So just another nice way of having them do some, some text interaction um, along with being able to share in groups, along with being able to, to see their faces and share directly. So just a lot of flexibility and different things that can be done. And then finally, I'll just mention that um, you see along this bar, lots of other features I'm not going to go into in, in detail right now, but there are things like annotate, which allow you to draw on the screen. Um, the whiteboard works in a similar way. You can manage your participants, so deciding if microphones are on or off, um, and the ways in which um, students are, are going to use their cameras and things like that. So just, again, a lot of control, a lot of different things that you can do. I do recommend finally that you go in to um, click on that Zoom link for the training. Once you get your free account, it will go into a lot more detail on all these features and you can really start to unlock the power. So really do invite you to get that free account, uh, start looking at some of these features, see how it can be, be used with your colleagues and students, and then jump in and start doing that. Um, we at the, the TGR Foundation are definitely here to support you in that. You can um, leave questions or comments um, or ask for support underneath this video in the, the chat feature. So um, please do do that. And we would love to help you as you're trying to figure out how something like Zoom can be used with your students and your colleagues. Last thing that I would just want to share with you um, that's related to some of the things that we've been talking about is that currently um, many of the phone and utility companies are um, supporting people with Wi-Fi. Um, and so again, this link, you're going to see this below um, just to share some of this information. But for example, some of the large companies like Comcast are offering free Wi-Fi sites um, and, and also making it so that um, people won't lose their connectivity um, if they're having a hard time covering Wi-Fi bills and things like that. Um, many of the utility companies are doing something like this. So just want to make it make you aware that if your students are having a hard time getting connected over Wi-Fi and that's something that's holding you back from doing some of this interaction, um, please take a look at, for example, this link below um, and learn more information about how they can stay connected or get connected if they haven't been in the past. So hopefully that will make it more available um, to more students and so that you can really unlock the power of this Zoom um, to use in this in this challenging time. Okay, so that's um, all that we have to share with you today. I hope you found this video helpful. Again, any questions, um, please leave them below in the comments section. Um, check out the descriptions for our schedule and the other things that we're gonna be providing uh, through this time. Um, please reach out to us. We're really excited to be working with educators and figuring out how we can make learning happen, um, even though we're not there with our students.
Thank you very much for joining.